here we are at Parting Stone in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Was here last night for the viewing party when Justin Crow from Parting Stone was on Shark Tank to explain his business and to ask for some help to grow this business. Now, Justin had this idea for a concept of what to do with cremated remains. This is not just a product. This is not something that you can buy in addition to something else. This is a, a whole concept of what to do with cremated remains and a way to keep them that's not in a bag, in a box, sitting on a shelf somewhere. Justin will explain more about why this began for him a little later in this video, but we are going to tour the facility. We're gonna check out some of the process some of it's still kind of secretive, uh, and find out more about this company, Party and Stone, here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. order that comes in we keep a log of the funeral home that sent it, the decedent's name, the order number, the date we got it, whether it's a funeral home or yours is what we call a direct to customer, and what it is, whether it's human, dog, or cat. We log in every order that comes in uh, by that. Okay, so I already logged Ralph in and um the yellow, everything is under a camera for, for uh, chain of custody purposes and, and that. So this uh, camera is recording everything that goes on right now. So I've already pulled him up in our Odoo system. And I'm going to open up the urn, take out whatever paperwork there is. Oh, you're going to get the pool. Yeah, he's big. Oh. Kind of a lab new fee mixed from what we could tell oh, um we were surprised just because it was only bone since he'd been disinterred we had to disinter him and just cremated the bones so we were pretty surprised even though cremated remains aren't tissue i was still surprised there was so much um from him i was like well he's hardy <laughs> so that's the middle stage and then I'm just going to re bag him because I see a leaf. Okay. Yeah, we have been losing a smidge of him, I think, along the way. We had a metal pig. I'm going to log the number. We had to, like, it was already in place, but we had to, like, format it for our needs. Gotcha. So a lot of it was built out, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. 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 It's pretty crazy how much um, we can actually do with this system. Like, search by different categories, um, track, like, interesting orders. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really full of information. They also have all of our transfer points, so you can look up someone by uh, name or the manufacturing number, and we can locate exactly where they are in the lab. Yeah, which is yeah. Chain of custody. Yeah, that's a that's a very big thing around here. It should be. Obviously, it yeah. Should be yeah. 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 Any death care organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the order that you placed, and we also put the manufacturing orders. Like she was saying, chain of custody, so we can follow 
both the order and the manufacturer number that's assigned to it. We also take a picture of the metal tag, part of the chain of custody, so that when it makes it through the process and ends up at shipping, um, the metal tag is sent back with the stones. If it's not, I mean, this is pristine. A lot of them are the ones that are on the body at time of cremation. So we clean them. We clean them as best we can. Yeah, that one's nice and shiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't go. The crematoriums around us do not put them actually in the process. They keep them outside and then reattach. Oh, okay. So it's becoming more the norm. Yeah. Um, What is your standard length of how long it takes from receiving to return? Right eight now weeks. it's eight weeks. It's four weeks. Yeah. The computer oh the, sorry, the computer says six. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Sorry. Yeah. But we're at like four. Yeah, but I think yeah, we have a cushion, but it's right now we're getting them through in four weeks. Nice. Yeah. Um yeah. one goes on the actual cremains. Travel tape will go with the metal tape. And then the other ones. Now, guys, I talked to you about transferring and how along the process you lose. So there is a bit of dust in here of Ralph that is now going away. So I talk about how through the process you never get 100% of your loved one and you always is a little bit of commingling because of what's in the refractory brick in the crematorium in the cremator along the way. And this is just showing that you do lose a little bit along the way in all the different stages of the process. So Pat also told us they do tag the animals and humans separately um, because they keep them separated throughout the process here at the facility. So she puts a purple tag on Ralph here because he's an animal. And then orange for human? No, um, what it's just white for... White for human. Yeah, for human? I just saw orange ones there, I didn't know what those were. Right, right there. Oh, these are if the metal tag needs polishing. Oh, nice. Um, so that when they get out of the kiln into the finisher, they will come over here and pull the metal tag out of the file cabinet, put them in this with the stones in the finisher, and it cleans the tag for us. Nice. Wow. It just an added for them to see. Hey, we got to go get the tag. It needs right. cleaning. Very cool. Now that Ralph has been received in by Pat. He is going to go to the waiting room. That is this space. All these cubbies. This is the waiting room. It is locked every night um, on both ends to try to protect from anyone coming in, doing anything naughty. Don't like those naughty people. But he stays here until it is his time to go for processing. The next step is the cremated remains go into the milling process. There's two size containers for larger amounts and smaller amounts. They, in that process, are mixed with um, some different components, some silica, some clay. They're liquefied. They're then put in a large bucket like this. This one, a big old bucket, lid put on set on the decanting shelves here. They sit there in full liquid form and they separate out from the liquid that had been put in to the cremated remains. That liquefied cremated remains. Never seen liquefied cremated remains before, so this is pretty cool. Can only show you so much during this process. I'm gonna try and keep telling you about it as we go along. And they are left in this decanting area for about 24 hours and then that 
product goes into be dried. So there is a name on all of these as we are going through. And to think this is actually somebody. You know, all of these different stages, as I'm looking at a pan of this liquid form of cremated remains, that is Mary Smith or whatever the name is, whoever the name is on it. Now, once they've dried, these pans look like a crusty desert where the desert floor has cracked and is all broken. They are then put into a mixer. Think a dough mixer, KitchenAid, same thing, but more industrial size, and they're mixed. They call this the dip and dot phase because it looks like a big bowl of dipping dots. They have different mixing paddles for animals and humans. The paddles are color coded for purple when they're to be used for animals. So they have no cross contamination between animals and humans here throughout the process, which is, I love. Throughout the process, that each set of remains is scanned in where they are, so that throughout the process, you know where your loved one is. Now, by request, yes. you can ask that they email you along the way, each stage, so that you know, hey, your loved one is going into the drying stage, or hey, your loved one is beginning to be processed. They don't want to inundate you with emails. They don't want to overwhelm you, but you can do that. And then, as Heidi saw us, if you question where your loved one is, like, ooh, I'm really anxious, where are they at? He will answer and he will tell you, hey, your loved one is in this stage, just to give you an update. It's pretty cool. In the mixing, once the material is broken down as far as it possibly can, they do add a little bit of water, and this end result is clay. It is a clay looking. They want to make sure that everything is very smooth, very thorough, because from this point, they are then formed into the stones, and then put into the kiln and there's not anything they can do at that point to smooth out any bumps that might have been in it. So if they have to go back twice into that mixing process, they will. They want the best end result for families when they're receiving their loved ones stones. This is the stone forming area. Each table has its own label code. So when cremated remains arrive to that table, someone to work, they scan them in. And then when they are completed, they scan them out. So you could see if you're tracking exactly how long your loved one is in this area. The stones go through a two-pass system. The first day that they are taken to the tables, formed, they then go onto a drying rack and come out for a second pass. They want these stones to be as smooth and perfect as they can make them for the families. They have a lot of ceramicists, artists on staff here that can form these stones and, and get them into the drying pretty quickly, about a half an hour for an order to go through being, you know, created into these stones, put into the drying rack. Whether it's because we're in Santa Fe and there's a lot of artistry here, um, or what it is, but this is the perfect city for this style of artistic endeavor to take cremated remains and, and turn them into stone, really. So these are the shelves that will go into the kiln with the stones on them. They can fit up to 12 sets of remains in the kiln to fire them on one round. In the drying process, after they've gone through that second pass and they go into the final dry before they go into the kiln, sometimes they get cracks in them. They then have to go back to the mixing process where water's added back to them. They're taken right back down to that base clay looking material and made into stones again and gone through the process for a second pass into the drying final rack again, then to the kiln. If they have cracks again, they then go to the hospital to have a little more tender loving care to try to get them to the end stage 
looking the way that they want them to look, those perfect final stones for a family. So after the kilning process, the stones are going to go over to be polished and kind of finished off. This used to be hand done for every stone. They now have some machinery that can help them do this faster, more efficiently, more effectively, which helps the time that it takes for someone to be returned back into the care of the family. These are not typically here. They're from the Shark Tank viewing party that they held here last evening that I was here for. But the stones go from then into the finishing process where they're polished up and not polished, but finished. There's not a polish to them. They're raw, matte finish, uh, like a stone would be if you found it outside. Then from there, they go off to be packaged up to be shipped out. Just about doing infants. If a quarter cup is a minimum, can they care for infant cremated remains to turn them into stone? Because often infants or um, fetal demise or, you know, very, very minute portions of cremated remains will come from babies when they're cremated. You may get just a tablespoon. They said, yes, they will do that. They have a special process for that, that they use, you know, smaller containers, different process just to make sure they can yield one stone at least for those families. So they do do everything they can to facilitate working with cremated remains for anybody that wants to send them will um, get put into a bag and then the decedent's name will be here. Um, we'll send the family sharing bags. Um, yeah, we'll vacuum seal them in the bag. Um, so when they open the box, this is, this is what they'll find. He yeah. handles all orders that need to go to the hospital and we go through the process. So this machine uh, breaks down the stones. Um, it's a really cool machine and it comes through and then this is how the remains come back out. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's get yep. them back to a ash-like consistency. Mm -hmm. Is this what would happen if someone wanted to reverse the process? Same yep. thing. Yep. Has that happened? I think it's happened at least once. I know Justin so. told me the one time there was one time and someone me, wanted it reversed. Oh yes. Goodness. Okay. Yeah. I can only recall one time, but yeah. Yeah. But this is how it would happen. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and actually then, a metal separator that the, mm -hmm. that the worker used after the body done. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what that machine is. So we're mm -hmm. just using it as a. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cremulator. Yeah, yep. Works. Yep. yep. Yeah, we had one outside that Jeff uh, <laughs> would get masked, masked up for, oh, and uh, it was a process. Oh, this is much <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then from here, they'll go into milling. So then that's what we know. What is one time that they have to come outside to do part of this process? So they have found when cremated remains from alkaline hydrolysis are brought in, something about the remains from that process have to go through a special kilning prior to beginning this whole process. They put off a very distinct odor and they do this then outside just because it kind of reacts to some people. They found that there's nothing health wise they need to be concerned about, but they have found that they do need to heat the remains prior to beginning the whole process and they are looking into what the pH, what different levels of things are in cremated remains from alkaline hydrolysis that are different than from flame cremation. So they have found there's a difference and they're digging into why that is to make sure that the end result is beautiful stones for every family regardless of the type of breakdown of the body 
whether it's flame cremation or alkaline hydrolysis that is done. So the question was also brought up. What if you want two people in one stone? Can you do that? Yes. So you could have two people or multiple people from the same family commingled and have that grouping of cremated remains sent and have one stone or a grouping of stones obviously made from that commingling of cremated remains. It would be a perfect mixture of all of those loved ones that are commingled into one piece that you can hold, carry, keep at home. Pretty crazy. You can do that, but I think it's pretty awesome that you could hold in your hands a compressed stone made from mom, dad, brother, sister, children, whoever you wanted into one. Pretty awesome. Thank you to Justin and the whole team here at Parting Stones for welcoming me in, to showing me this process, to allowing me to share with them on their experience at Shark Tank and to just share all of this behind the scenes with me. I know I can only show you some of this and you're going to want to see more because that's just how you guys are. We are all very curious about what goes on behind the scenes everywhere. Sometimes we just can't show all of it. We're thankful though that we got an inside peek here at Parting Stone as to how they take ashed cremated remains and give a family back a solid form of cremated remains for them to have, to hold, to take their family member home in a new, unique form. The answers may be a problem that some people have of what to do with cremated remains that they didn't know there was an answer to. If this process interests you, you would like your loved one turned into solidified stones, contact Parting Stone, partingstone.com, or contact your local funeral home and ask them to help you turn your loved one's ashes, cremated remains, into solidified stones. Thanks everyone. Post your comments below, share this video, like this video, subscribe. See you soon.